10th of January 2024, John Hammond coming to you from Norwich, UK. Greetings to the brethren of the one God out there in the whole wide world, one body of Christ. Trevor's not with me today, God willing, he's with me tomorrow. Uh, another brother is coming out with me today, and we're going to head down to the city centre shortly, and we're going to be led by the Holy Spirit uh, to the field, or fields, which are white unto harvest. So just a prayer request, a very quick prayer request for four teenage boys uh, I met outside a church building, call it a church cafe, a church drop-in, and they were thinking about coming in, so I, I walked up to them, I was going in myself, I said, come in, you'll see that Christians don't have two heads. And, I, and I, my, my sense of humour, which can be quite silly sometimes, it was a spontaneous joke, I said, look, if you come in, nobody's going to grab you, make you become monks, shave your head and put you on a mountain. And of course, that's a ridiculous thought, as if anybody in the churches would do that. Uh, anyway, so leave that to one side. They thought that was quite amusing. Uh, so they looked at each other. I said, just come in. No obligation to buy anything. Just come in, have a look around. The toilets are at the back if you need to go. And it was a welcome. And the Lord welcomes people into the kingdom. And of course, it's not about the physical building. It's absolutely not about buying and selling in the cafe. It's about coming in, being invited in. And these four boys, teenagers... Um, they they were happy to come in and, and look around. When, when, I, when I came in, soon after, they were standing there looking around, so I talked to them for a good 20, maybe 30 minutes, told them everything they needed to know. Something that nobody uh, at the time, in the 60s, when I rebelled and I stopped going to the church building on a Sunday, uh, and the youth night, I just stopped suddenly. Sadly, no one came to find out Jonathan White what is going on with your life? Why have you stopped coming to church? But that was then, in the 60s, in a denomination that wasn't led by the Holy Spirit, although they were true Christians, true born-again Christians there, that particular denomination didn't believe in the baptism with the Holy Spirit, didn't believe in spiritual gifts, and therefore that type of denomination, and most of them were the same, they were not proactive. And if somebody stopped coming to church, they didn't go to find the lost sheep. So this was my motivation with these, with these lads in their teens, maybe 16, 17, <clears throat> around about the age that I went wrong. So I told them this, and I, I gave them the heads up. I gave them foresight about drug dealers coming to you and, and shoplifting and all of that stuff. And, and having the right sort of friends. <clears throat> and the four of them already in a friendship. I spoke to them about people being the church and not the building itself. We gather in these buildings, but we are the church, the body of Christ, the living stones. <clears throat> so they were open to everything. And when we started talking about uh, drug taking, alcoholism and drug taking, which is what we do, uh, try to help the people on the streets get off that stuff, this was the Lord in me preempting them from getting into that stuff. And three of them looked a bit doubtful, but one boy said, he already knew, he said, no, if you take drugs, you let the demons in. And I thought, yes, you do know. Probably they, uh, this boy has good Christian parents who have warned him off the drugs because the demons do get in. And hearing him say that was great. Uh, he understands. I affirmed it, of course. And the, and the other three boys took note. So pray for them. Uh, the other prayer request, a very quick one this morning. I'm waiting for my friend and brother to join me here. So I'll end the video quite shortly when he comes. The other one is the caretaker. So I've been living in this place for ooh, 20, 20... 20 odd years anyway, and uh, he's a caretaker who's been with us for maybe 10 years. And of course, not quite every day, but most days I have a little chat with him, tell him about Jesus. They all know that uh, my wife and I are born of God. There are several Christians here in this, in this block of flats, tower block. 
So they all know we're Christians. And so we try to engage with the residents, which is like a small village, 100 people, maybe 150 people in, in the block, uh, and the caretaker himself. So I've had this conversation with him for many years and testifying how Jesus set me free from the gambling and the smoking and the drinking and, and just wasting my money on things I wasn't meant to get into, which I, these things, I've, I had the addictions from my teenage years. So there's the connection with that. So this morning I'm coming down the lift and I think about the caretaker and I have, a, I have an opening for a conversation with him, which is basically um, I'm forgiving the boy who gave me my first cigarette. And I won't mention his name, but I, I obviously I remember his name all this time. Uh, and I would be 11 years old. And he was smoking legally, of course. Uh, and so on one occasion we were walking home um, after school and he, he, said, he said, I've got to have a cigarette. Do you want one? Or maybe he urged me, I can't remember the detail of the conversation, but the upshot was I did have a cigarette with him. Of course, I coughed and spluttered, as you do with the first cigarette. But I was 11 years old. And he wasn't meant to be smoking, I wasn't meant to be smoking. And as things were, a teacher walking past where we were, uh, strangely enough, in the Vicarage Gardens, uh, in a suburb of Norwich, UK, uh, Sproston, and uh, the teacher saw us smoking, told us off, got our names, reported me to the headmaster. The next morning, he called me into his office and he banned me from playing football for a week, which was my first love at school, playing football. And that was punishment. And that stopped me having any interest in smoking after that. But then the age of 13, uh, another boy, the name is in my mind, I'm not going to say it. I forgive him because he asked me to hold his cigarette when he went in to get something for school and we were biking to school from Sproson to Thorpe and um, he asked me to hold his cigarette and I just wondered, thought came to my mind, it was the enemy tempting me, I wonder what that tastes like, that thought. And the enemy can put that into your mind. I wonder what that tastes like. And you think it's your thought, right? But bear in mind, the mind is the battleground. And when you look at something, a thought can come to you. I wonder what that tastes like. Or a coveting thought. You see a, a tempeh note on the, on the floor, um, you pick it up and you keep it. No, that's stealing. So these thoughts that come to us, we have to examine them, even as ch children, not to take something that doesn't belong to us. And children have to be taught, don't put your hand in the cookie jar and take a cookie without permission. And children do sneakily steal cookies from behind their parents' back. So coming back to the caretaker, of course I've told him that Jesus can set you free from your need, you think a need to smoke, it's a craving for nicotine, and Jesus can set you free. Just ask him, Jesus set me free. And if you're willing to be free, you will be free. And I tried to give up smoking several times, but it wasn't until I let Jesus in that he fulfilled all my needs on the inside. And of course, I didn't need to do the things I did. Drinking, gambling and smoking were amongst those things. Workaholism, the need to work. Uh, and if you're if you working hard like I was, um, it's about adrenaline, the buzz, the adrenaline, the nicotine, the caffeine, the alcohol, all these things that uh, keep society going. And remember, we were in the marketing industry and they, the marketing industry is about promoting products to do with these things. Nicotine, caffeine, alcohol, sugar, fat. And fat, you can get a high on fat. 
honey. We know biblically, honey gives you bright eyes in the Old Testament. And honey is very sweet, it's very full of natural sugar. So, addiction to things, foodstuffs, and of course, material stuffs, magazines of any type you can get addicted to. And of course, when we were kids, we had comics. Well, there's nothing wrong with comics. And we look forward to getting our comics. And, and my mum, a single parent mum, money was hard, but she made sure we got our comics. And we got young ones and then the teenager ones. Uh, and we got various comics. And there was nothing wrong with that as such. But my mum was a Christian. She sent us to Sunday school. So there was a context here. But today's comics, if you like, they become harder and more brutal, horrific even, and violent. And children can, can get addicted to those things. Uh, video games, internet games, uh, searching the internet and finding things on the dark web. These, of course, are forbidden. Forbidden. And, and there are many laws in the world against such things. But, of course, in God's eyes, these are forbidden. These are evils occult evils hidden so don't seek hidden things which is the occult the dark web is a hidden place don't look for it and once you've seen it you can't unsee it there are awful images out there and we have to resist the temptation and it's no good me saying i'll do some research on the internet i'll look at this i'll look at that i'll look at this i have a free will i can do it but i'm not going to do it because the Holy Spirit within me bears witness of good and evil. No longer look on the evil things. And it comes to a point that we ask God to direct our eyes and direct our ears to hear what the Spirit is saying, to see what God is doing. And of course, God is not doing any evil. Absolutely not. So people need to hear that more and more. They need to hear it and they need to obey God, to obey the Holy Spirit, to obey God's voice, Jesus' voice, the shepherd's voice. And once you let Jesus in, he's in your conscience, your spirit, your soul and your body. And this is what the baptism with the Holy Spirit is about. Believe and be baptized with water and fire. So we'll leave it there. We'll maybe continue that uh, later. Uh, my friend is coming. So God bless you. Keep praying for us as we're praying for you. Pray for the caretaker. And I, I told him I keep forgiving the person who first gave me the cigarette and the person who first gave me my sip of alcohol. God bless you. Value you and your prayers. God bless.